Hi everyone, so I'm going to continue talking about the standard molar enthalpy of formation or delta HF. Uh, remember that I just showed you in the previous video that you can obtain these values usually from reference sources like a textbook or online sources. And these are tabulated, remember, for a formation reaction, which is basically a reaction where you produce one mole of a compound from the elements and all of the species being at standard state and we uh, show uh, I showed some examples of how to write uh, formation reactions right now one of the things I want to point out right away is that it, when you're when we're looking at uh, values of Delta HF at our uh, from the tables that I showed you in the previous video you notice that uh, the most stable form of an element the uh, enthalpy of formation is always zero and this should make sense because if you remember this was the example of uh, formation reactions that we wrote down in the previous previous video and you notice that for all the elements uh, for the all the compounds here they come from you know more than one elements right but for the element itself like oxygen for example the formation reaction would just be oxygen gas going to oxygen gas in which case what we have is just uh, if you think about this, there's really no change in the reactants and products, so the delta H has to be zero for this. That's why the delta H F for uh, a reaction that looks like this would just be zero, and that's what we saw in the um, table, in the table of standard uh, enthalpy of formation. Okay, so the, another way of saying that is that that's a way for you to uh, conveniently figure out what's the most stable form of an element because if you don't know for example that you know what is the most stable form of uh, iodine for example I2 what you can do is just go to the uh, table for the enthalpy of formation values and look up the uh, value of enthalpy of formation for iodine that gives you a value of zero so in this case this one is the one that has value of zero so you look up that and you, you find out that that's I2 solid which means that that's the most stable form of iodine is the solid form okay now going back to this delta HF idea um, you can actually this is um, a really convenient method of uh, this delta HF you know values uh, because if you think about formation reaction it's basically a reaction where you're writing you know all the elements going to a compound right so the if you draw an energy diagram that looks like this the all the elements uh, have enthalpy of formation equals zero so in other words that's the zero line that's like our reference point right there is the um, enthalpy of formation uh, for elements and then if we go from the elements to form a compound the energy that's uh, you gain by forming that compound is what we call the enthalpy of formation. Now vice versa you can also take a compound and break it apart into the element and if you do that then the um, enthalpy of formation uh, value will be reversed right because you're going the opposite way. Remember that in Hess's law if we reverse a reaction uh, you, the delta H becomes the negative of the it's multiplied by negative one so in other words if you go from compound to elements the value of delta H you get will be negative delta HF and if you go from element to compound then the value of delta H you get is the, the you know the delta HF itself okay so why is this useful well it's useful because then you can use this idea to basically create a thermodynamic cycle for any reaction you want okay uh, assuming that you have a value of delta HF for that um, you know for that uh, species so let me illustrate this with an example so let's say I'm interested in this case to figure out the um, uh, delta H okay the delta H of this reaction which is combustion of glucose okay so this is glucose C6H12O6 uh, and I want to combust it with sugar to form 6CO2 and 6H2O liquid okay and let's say I have no information to go from here okay I, I want to know this value but I you know let's say I can't do the experiment so I'm trying to figure out a way using Hess's law perhaps where I can somehow come up with value of delta H for this but you know that usually in Hess's law you have um, you know you're given cer a certain series of uh, reactions to work with but in this case you don't have anything but if you think about it, you can actually use the, the enthalpy of formation idea to solve this problem. And the way we're going to do it is the following. You're basically starting from your reactants. Here's your reactants right here illustrated in this uh, slide. These are your two reactants. 
So the way we're going to imagine a hypothetical path uh, is that we're going to take the reactants and we're going to break them all to their elements in the standard state. Okay, so we're going to take C6H12O6 and break them into the elements. Well, what elements did, will they form? They're going to form carbon solid, they're going to form H2 gas, and they're going to form uh, O2 gas, right? And that's what's illustrated here. You're taking the reactants and you're breaking it apart into the uh, uh, elements. Now the other reactant is six oxygen gas, so that's already uh, an element itself. So then basically this is kind of bringing it up here. So in other words, we're taking all of this and bringing it up to the zero level, just the same way as we illustrated here, right? We're taking the compound, breaking it down. In this case, our reactants, breaking it down to elements. Okay, bring it to zero level. The energy needed, right? The energy needed for you to take uh, the energy needed to take this. Um, reactants and convert them to the elements is basically uh, equal to the negative of the delta HF for uh, glucose plus the negative of the delta HF for oxygen. Well we know for oxygen is zero, right? That's that's written here. Uh, hopefully you can see this that this value is zero. But what about for uh, glucose? Well it's gonna be the negative of that value so what you can do is you can go back to that table which is shown here and look up the value of enthalpy of formation for glucose which is shown which is uh, shown right here right C6H12O6 solid and it's negative 1275 so that's the delta HF value itself so if I want the negative of that number that means it becomes positive 1275 and so you see that's what's written here now this particular uh, value here that's written there it's plus uh, positive 1273.3 kilojoules. This is because I took this from a, a different text. So depending on the reference value, people usually, you know, there's a, a little bit of an error in determination of the enthalpy of formation. But you get the idea that this is basically the negative of the delta HF for uh, glucose, right? So in other words, now we take all our reactants and we break them apart into elements. And then the question then is, well, how do we use that information to uh, calculate delta H? Well, then we imagine the other hypothetical pathway, which is that the reactants that we broke apart into the elements is then going to recombine, all these elements are going to recombine to form the products. Now, there are two products here. One product is CO2, the other product is H2O. So we imagine that the carbon and the oxygen is going to combine together to form six molecules of CO2. Now, if you think about that, you know, you can write a formation reaction for CO2, which is one carbon plus two plus one oxygen going to C, uh, CO2, right? So if you have you want to form six of this, that means you need six carbon and six oxygen. Um, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, six carbon and six oxygen, and you form six CO2. But that's basically six times the delta H formation for carbon dioxide. Again. That means that when you form the carbon dioxide, you're taking, uh, you know, you, the energy you gain by doing that is multiplying six times times the uh, delta HF for CO2. And again, for CO2, you can go back here and find that for CO2 gas, the uh, enthalpy of formation is negative 393.5. And so to form six molecules of a CO2, I would multiply this number by six, so I get neg uh, negative 393.5 times six, which uh, shown here is this number, negative 2361, 2361 kilojoules. Okay, so that's only forming one of the product. What about the H2O liquid? Well, the same thing, you can form H2O liquid by using H2 and oxygen. So six H2 and three oxygen combined forms six H2O. And to get, you know, the value of the enthalpy you get, you basically multiply the enthalpy of formation of water times 6, right? And so you get the value of negative 17, 14.8 here based on this textbook. Now, so overall, when you form your product, right, which is these two guys here, you get this much energy, 2361 plus uh, 1714 in the negative value. And when you break your reactants, you get this, you need this much energy, which is 1273. So when you add the two numbers together, overall in the net, you get a stabilization by this much, right? Which is illustrated by this green arrow right here. So then what you get is you get a, a 
about negative 2802.5 kilojoules. So that corresponds to the delta H of this overall reaction. Okay, so hopefully you can see from here that you can use the enthalpy of formation values to create these hypothetical cycles, okay, that will take you from reactant to products, okay? So you don't have this you don't have this value right away, but you can basically kind of take it up to elements and then from the elements recombine to form the products and as a result get the uh, enthalpy value for the reaction. Okay, so I just want to, uh, you know, summarize this in one uh, uh, slide right here. Basically what we did in the previous diagram is we calculate the delta H, uh, you know, standard uh, from delta H formation of each species in our reaction by doing the following. We multiply each of the delta HF for each of the species with the correct stoichiometric coefficient. If you look back at that example, that's what we did. We multiplied the CO2 by 6, we multiplied the water by 6, we multiplied this by 1 because there's only one, uh, uh, you know, uh, glucose here, and we'll multiply this one by 6, but this is 0 to begin with, so that's why we still get 0 in the end. So we multiply each of the delta HF with the correct stoichiometric coefficient, and what we did is we reverse the values for the reactants. We make it minus 1 times the delta HF value, okay, because we're doing the reverse step when we break the reactants apart to its elements. So generally, and this is probably something you might have seen before in, you know, prior courses, is that we have a formula for calculating delta H uh, standard of a reaction, and that is the sum of all the delta HF of the products minus the sum of all the delta HF of the reactants, again, with each delta HF multiply with the correct stoichiometric coefficient. I want to now use that uh, equation or that formula that we just derived basically by considering delta HF and using creating a thermodynamic cycle to uh, solve this problem right here. So this problem just very simply asking you to solve uh, calculate delta H for this reaction um, and this is actually a redox reaction so calculate delta H for this reaction uh, using the data from Appendix 4 in Zumdal, and that's really coming from that, that same uh, reference table I've shown you in uh, this video and the previous video. That's coming from this textbook right here. Okay, so what I've done here is I've basically fill in the value of delta HF from the uh, reference table. Remember, you can get that reference table from the website, the class website. So I basically look up the values for uh, all the species that are in the reaction, and you can know you. you pretty much, you know, would probably notice right away that for Na and H2, because they're the element, uh, uh, they're elements and they're elements in the most stable state of these elements, sodium is solid, H2 is a gas, their values of uh, delta HF are zero, and then for the other two guys we have the values right here. And what we want to do now, of course, is just calculate delta H of the overall reaction, which means we're going to take uh, the enthalpy formation of the products minus the enthalpy formation of the reactants, each of them multiplied by its coefficient. So that's what I wrote down here. I wrote 2 moles times 2 here, referring to 2 moles comes from the 2 coefficient of NaOH, 2 moles times negative 470 kilojoules per mole for each NaOH, and then the other species is 0, so I didn't write that in, um, and then I subtract from it the uh, delta HF for the reactants. In this case, I have two moles of water, um, which uh, each one of them has a negative 286 kilojoules per mole of the um, uh, enthalpy of formation. And of course, the other re same thing with the, um, uh, the re product. The one of the reactants also has a enthalpy of formation of zero, so I'm not going to write that in. And if you calculate this value, then what you get is uh, negative. 368 uh, kilojoules, okay, which is the answer to the problem of finding the uh, enthalpy uh, change for this reaction, okay. So hopefully this clarifies how you can use this uh, piece of information, enthalpy formation. We'll have some more examples and practices in class.